Okay, Council, just noting that we are now uh, live streaming on Facebook platform. I'd like to welcome the community uh, to our General Council meeting on April 27, 2001. Note the time, uh, 6.15. Um, looking to our first agenda item. Um, I see we have Tuesday Johnson McDonald with us. She does have a presentation as I understand. Um, and surely just confirming that we have provided uh, Tuesday with the uh, share screen capabilities. Thumbs up, okay, Tuesday, take it away and uh, understand you can share your screen. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, before I start, I just wanna thank council very much for putting me on the agenda and giving me the opportunity to provide you more information on the vertical grow. Um, business that Ben McDonald is proposing, uh, what, not proposing, but plans to proceed with. Um, I want to acknowledge that I am an advocate for food security and an angel investor in this initiative. Um, to begin, I really wanted to make sure that we all understood what um, is being proposed around vertical grow and have a 11 minute um, video, it's on YouTube, a video on vertical growth, and I'm going to start that now. With massive innovation in lighting technology over the last few years, vertical farms have all of a sudden gone from science projects to legitimate businesses capable of feeding lots of people. But as lighting costs go down and the technology improves, it's actually the future of these farms that I'm so interested in. Some people are turned off by the pristine mechanical growing conditions, like it's something out of the matrix, but that's actually what makes it so exciting. Companies like Bowery Farming have the opportunity to re-engineer every aspect of the growing process even down to the seeds they use, which are optimized for flavor instead of having to worry about insect and weather resistance. Using a system of robotics and automation, all running through what they call the Bowery operating system, Bowery is able to use 95% less water than traditional farms, use zero pesticides and chemicals, be 100 times more productive per square foot of land, and most importantly, build farms right next to cities to avoid the environmental impact of freighting food across the country and the world. So today I'm here at Bowery's R&D facility to find out how they use technology to make every step of this process as efficient as possible. So what, what's the point in the whole thing? Like why, why bother? Why bother? Uh, it's actually a legitimate question, right? When you look at farming today, it is the largest consumer of resources globally. 70% of the world's water every year goes to agriculture. And because of the chemically intensive way that we farm now, we've actually lost 30% of our arable farmland in just the last 40 years. One of the things you always hear about vertical farming is it's like, hey, we have a, a power source. It's called the sun. Why are you wasting that? About eight or nine years ago, you actually saw the cost of lights drop by over 85%. And you saw the efficiency of the lights more than double. But before that, this wouldn't work. No. What is the first thing that you guys think about when it comes to growing more efficient crops. The seeds themselves are where everything starts, right? It's where everything starts with any plant. I, I just had my negative test. I'm negative for all oh, STDs good. and COVID. <laughs> so this is the seeder. It's like an, it automates the seeding process. So this is where it starts. So what do you actually need this material for? So when it's a seedling, it's growing roots. So it needs something to anchor itself on. And then there is this drum here that will dibble it. So it pushes the soil just a little bit lower. Right. What this does, it kind of creates like a cone, so if it falls here, it kind of rolls into the hole. How is this different than a seed that like a, a farmer would plant? Well, a farmer could could also plant a coated seed. There's a vacuum inside the cylinder that's gonna pull the seed as this spins, and so every hole will have one seed. If we were to not coat the seed, the machine might pick up three or four seeds because it's not that accurate. But where you have this larger seed, uh, the machine is gonna have an easier time Pulling, pulling that one seed and then dropping it into the plug. What would be the downside of having multiple seeds in a plug? Yeah, you wouldn't have nice uh, uniform heads. You might have more loose leaf, for example. This is so cool. Okay, so what happens from here? Well, from here we will take it and then we can transport this to the germination chamber. Germination is the stage where seeds sprout out into seedlings. Typically, you'd need to cover the seeds in topsoil to prevent them from drying out, but because Bowery can guarantee almost 100% humidity, they can leave them uncovered. 
These flats will stay in here for anywhere between two and maybe six days. From seed to seedling, like in the wild, on, a, on an open air farm, how long would this process take? Germination rates are highly dependent on temperature. So here we keep it at constant temperature. So for the most part, it's pretty much every X number of days. We know how many days. But in a perfect world outside? Probably a few more days longer. So at every stage of this process, you guys are saving time, right? Yeah. So we will transport them from the germination chamber to, yeah, that's OK. Wow, I, I have one job. <laughs> I don't mind sharing. You know, these were in here a little too long, probably, and they're slightly elongated. What's wrong with the fact that these are elongated? They redirect resources towards uh, stem to make more stem. We don't want them to do that. We want them to produce more leaf. I can yeah. notice something that's going on here, which is this last row didn't get seeded properly. So that would mean that this tray is... 10% so or 5% or less efficient. More like 2%, but yeah, it'll be about 2% lower than a lower mass. We can we can even uh, speculate. All right, so this is like a completed tray then. I mean, because we're in the development facility, not everything is the same thing right, if we yeah. were in production. In, in production, you would see like basically the entire thing filled with right. these seedlings, like, like just one, one of these. So. so now we send this down the line yep. into the mothership into the growing operation, right? Yep, that's right. Yeah. It's pretty f***ing cool. From here, the trays are moved into any of the farm's growing positions, where AI scans crop information through imaging and QR codes and gives each crop its own customized plan of water and light. So all these trays have like a, a built-in drain system, right? So the water is continuously flowing? That's right. So the water passes through. We treat the water, give it back the nutrients that it needs. One of your talking points is that you guys use 95% less water than a conventional farm. A large part of that is because we're constantly recirculating. Okay. Our aim is to make sure that really the water that leaves the facility is in the plants. And I keep coming to this point that like, yeah. we give this tray what it needs when it needs it is very different than a blanket irrigation right. across you know, an acre of farmland. And what does that mean? Do you think of that in, in terms of the height of the water? Height plays a role. Turnover plays a role. Will there always be water touching the bottom of the base? Or no, will not it sometimes shut off? Not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. We assume that crops need sunlight, but that's not exactly the case, right? There's a spectrum of light, and the plants don't exactly need every part of that. Crops need energy. Okay. And so we've done uh, an immense amount of experimentation looking at different color or spectra of lights. What we've honed in on are these white lights. Right outside you have shading and not shading, you have clouds. And so for us to be able to provide a consistent lighting experience right. is right. what's really integral. Do these crops have like bedtime? There's nighttime. There's nighttime. Yeah. But what we can do, yeah. uh, which we're constantly looking to explore and understand and, and exploit really is how do we take advantage of providing more light? So now, this will stay here for a number of days. In this, these smaller plants? These smaller plants in this configuration. And then we'll move it to a, a place in our farm for it to continue its, its life cycle um, as it reaches adulthood. So this is the next stage. How, how, far, how far in are these crops? I would say they're about 10 to 12 days after planting. Okay. And this is where growth really starts to accelerate and they, they start to look like what we what we eat every day. So these trays are, are holding the plants, they're holding the little block of, of peat, right? Yep. And so it doesn't really matter what this material is. No, it's right? just a holder for the plant, Yeah. right? And in fact, the grow media is really just a holder right. that connects the roots together with the plant. This, this grow media isn't giving any nutrients, no, it's not providing any much value other than just keeping things together, just, just like this structure here. So from here, how many how many weeks out are we from harvesting these plants? Generally speaking, our growth cycles are anywhere from like 17 days to, to 32 days. So these have about anywhere from about 10, 10 to 10, 20 12 days, days left. Yeah, left. All right, let's send this guy back. Uh, OK, so we're on the third of five levels of the farm in this operation. Why even bother with a vertical farm? Why bother? Why bother? Uh, why, why bother with the verticality? Why bother with vertical? Well, if you think about it, we could be growing in this warehouse, yeah. and we'd be using one one slice. Right. And so we can be upwards of a hundred times more efficient with land use because of how we stack plants vertically in a farm. Right. But it's essentially a real estate question. It's a real estate question. How high could you go? Like, what? It, what's the limit? There's no limit. There's no limit. It's just how high is the the ceiling of a warehouse? The fact that this growing position 
morphs into whatever this crop needs, lets us grow this here, or grow it, you know, one or two levels up higher. If things are kind of moving on their own a little bit, why would a, a human being need to get up here when typically these trays are brought down for processing and kind of intervention? We don't really think about how people are involved in the growing process, but how, how do we take people out of the growing process? Yeah. Our goal is to actually have as few people walking around our plants as possible. Sorry about that. We're here for a reason, to spread the word. Spread the seed? To okay. spread the, probably yeah. not. That's part of the trust in Bowery is that we're not, no one's touching these plants while they're growing. All we can do is ruin things. Right? All we can do is ruin things. This is uh, our red leaf lettuce when yeah. it reaches maturity. They've grown up, you know, like we said, about seven to 10 days since we last saw them. So this is the same crop in the middle of harvesting. I just was hoping you could show us the root system. Yeah, let's lift this up. Wow. And look at that. Holy look shoot. at that root development. It's so different yeah. than those seedlings, right? You want all the water in the farm to go out in the boxes. That's the ideal, right? So now we'll drain this tray, get it out of here, and then it'll be harvested and uh, sold to the public. That's right. Untouched. Untouched. All right, so we've made it. We've seen the way that the romaine gets from seed to this point. Um, obviously, this is not how you guys would harvest it in the real world. I know you have a deluxe line of machines that they may or may not give me the b-roll access to but um for i just yeah i mean i would i'd love to try it with you right well, now you've and been just... in the farm all day so the last the most important thing you can do is actually try the product you've been a part of that's growing. my one that's my one leaf that i get well i was giving you one to try i guess you have a mask on so it's a little trickier see so you get the sweetness it's got the whole spectrum of flavor in there yeah. it's as if it grew in someone's, you know, countryside farmland. Just using a lot less water, a lot less chemicals, a lot less in general. So not to get like doomsday-ish, but if we didn't figure out these new ways of farming, what would our food supply look like in 50 years? You know, nine to 10 billion people that'll be on the planet in the next 30 years. Right. And according to the UN, you need somewhere between 50 to 70% more food to feed that population. Mm -hmm. And all the while, 70 to 80% of the population is actually gonna be living in and around cities. So there's this real move towards urbanization. Figuring out how do you feed and how do you provide fresh food to urban environments, both more efficiently as well as more sustainably, is a very important question today and an even more important question in the years to come. When you spent so much much time obsessing over proximity and how close am I to the source of what I'm consuming. When you leave, do you just want to like really mess shit up and order like a whole tuna in from Japan? <laughs> <laughs> for better or for worse, the more you understand the food supply chain, the more you realize how convoluted and complex it really is. And I think if there's anything COVID showed us, it actually yeah. was just that. I think we took for granted for a long time the fact that you could walk into a store and find anything you wanted whenever you wanted it. And that wasn't true for a period of time. And I think it shined a light for people on how reliant we are in other parts of the country, other parts of the world for that matter. Here's hoping I've turned that, turned that off. Um, I know that this is not the first presentation. You've, heard, you've had a lot of presentations and information from Benjamin over the last few months um, in his request to obtain a support for um, BCR for the One Nation's business um, to grow foods and vegetables. Um, so there was, in the last presentation, there was a number of questions and a request to Darren to um, step away and do some more research. Um, I've had conversations with Darren um, in regards to those questions, and I just wanted to come and support this, this request because it, it's just so important, not just to our community, but to our broader society that we start making steps towards food security. I do understand that one of the key concerns, and I, you know, and I respect, I respect the key concerns that you have around it, what's the liability to council? Is are we asking council to provide any money, or is Benjamin asking? Because it's not my business. I'm an angel investor. Benjamin is not asking council for any fiscal dollars. It is all going to be done by um, angels investors, other investors grants and loans and how the rest of us business people have established our businesses. 
Um, he has a firm grasp in entrepreneurship. He has been working with me in my business here on the reserve for the last eight, 10 years. Um, he's done an enormous amount of research and educating himself in this area of work. He has um, strong, strong support, not just within this community, but outside of our community with people who are already doing virtual grow. Um, for lettuce and tomatoes and strawberries and, and these things. Now, what you've seen was a huge operation, an, an amazing operation. Um, obviously, Ben will not be starting quite at that level. It will be a build up to that, um, that we really support. Um, I think one of the other questions that, that I heard the last presentation was around the name and some confusion around um, his advocacy around cannabis. Um, Benjamin has not started a cannabis business as we have seen um, grow in our community. He has at this point continued to respect council's decision around that at this point. And so I really wanna kind of leave that alone. What we're bringing forward um, yes, it's the same name because One Nation is about Benjamin's morals, values, and what he wants to see broadly as a, as a businessman. Um, a lot of work and research. Um, and I got to say, a, a lot of heart went into the development of that name. And of, so it, it is about him and being a One Nation and being a Mohawk. Um, so that's, you know, I hoping, I'm hoping that that now can be put to rest. The other kind of question that we heard was the idea around it being um, this particular business or another business being brought up would be too much competition in the community. Um, I'm not sure about that. I don't know that there is enough people out there um, busy working in food security. And the focus does not necessarily have to be just our community. We have a whole society outside of Six Nations that needs to have um, this level of service, a level of, or opportunity to, to purchase food. Um, and I think I'm going to kind of leave it there, Nathan. I'm, I'm not sure if, if anybody has any more, any additional questions, but certainly um, I am a strong advocate of supporting this business. Thank you, Tuesday. And, and thanks for the presentation and the clarification. So I do see some hands going up, so I'm just going to go right to Council. Um, start off with uh, Councillor Johnson. Thanks. And thanks for the presentation, Tuesday. Nathan, so do we need a motion just to accept this as information? Because that's all we can do, right? This isn't the business owner. So um, it's just, a, so do we need a motion for that? Yeah. So I'll make that motion um, that we accept this as information. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor. Um, but before that, I see Helen with her hand up. Um, uh, I don't know what we're doing, but it seems like we've already done, accepted this as information a couple of times. Is that what we're gonna keep doing, accepting it for information? Are we gonna act on anything? <laughs> I have no problem passing a resolution to support Ben's project. Ben's been to us twice. <clears throat> Is he going to come back the third time? Back to Wendy. Yeah, the only reason I said that, Helen, is because Ben isn't here. He's not presenting. It's his business, and we can't do that with Tuesday. She's, um, as I understand, she's just doing a support presentation for her son. Um, and as an angel investor. So anything we would have to do would be with the business owner. And it's still not clear in terms of the background information if it was obtained on, on what that means. Is that what we're doing going forward? Okay, just, so I'm gonna, Tuesday I see you have some clarification, so I'll turn it over to you. So Benjamin does know that I'm here. He's the one that provided the, the video. Um, Again, it's, it's as Helen has um, relayed, he's, he's been here twice. Um, he's given you all the information. Um, I think the only piece that was, was missing was 
this kind of video so that we made sure that everybody understood what the proposal was. Um, and I'm sure Benjamin's watching. Back to uh, Wendy. Yeah, but Ben isn't here, right? So that's not who's doing the presentation. So, and I do have comments and I do have questions, but I'm not prepared to talk about somebody who isn't here, who is the business owner, because then we're just, I don't know what that is. So it, it's, it's not appropriate on many levels. I'll go over to Helen. Yeah, I, I'm really confused. I don't, I don't know what we're doing. And I'll second the motion. I, I'll support. I support. I support what they're trying to do this business that he's trying to start because we have to start looking at technology for the future. In terms of, we all know food yeah. is even getting scarce now with COVID. And technology is going to be the answer to everything for us come to come in the future. I probably won't be here by then, but it's going to be the answer for everything. So we really need to start getting in, involved in technology and how we can do better things for food, sustainability, food security, whatever it's called, so that people can have things to eat. It's the farm, the farmers ain't going to be cutting it much longer. They don't even. Some guy in, I don't know where he was, Simcoe had, had a 15 million tomatoes that he can't get rid of because the stores are all closed and nobody's buying tomatoes. And he's trying to sell them cheap to people and thank goodness everybody bought it. But knowledge is going to be the key. I think this is, ben is taking this on is a good thing for our community. Hopefully it'll grow into a big operation at some point. So I don't know what council's doing. Like this has been going on for too long. I'm sorry, but I'm just really confused. Nathan, it's Hazel. Okay, I see some hands up. I'm gonna go Hazel and then Sherry Lane. Uh, Tuesday, just for clarification, what you're asking for is a uh, council support resolution for Ben in order for him to apply for funding to commence his business. Is that what this is about? Yes, that was the original BCR request made. Okay, so with that, and um, I agree with what Helen is saying too, that we do need to start looking into this uh, manufacturing of food because before we all get to the point of a famine, which I, I watched a documentary on and it's a scary looking situation. So I think if we just share our support for your son to commence, it's not gonna, uh, it's just gonna open a door for him to seek funding, right? So I can second that motion. Which motion? Now I'm confused. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to go through the order of the speakers and then I'll narrow in on what we're what we're agreeing to. Um, but thanks for that, Hazel. I'm going to go Sherry Lynn and then I see Michelle. Um, what's the follow up from last time Ben was here? I thought there was supposed to be some work done to, and brought back to council. Has that been done? Because again, I have no problem. You know, this is this is needed for sure. The part of it was there was some stuff that was supposed to happen and brought back to council to finally decide. Can we have a follow up on that? Where that's at? Because you're uh, right. So I don't see Darren or Dwayne on, um, but I know they were working on that business recognition policy. And, and, and I think that's the, the, um, <clears throat> the piece that's missing in this is, um, however, and, and I'm not commenting on how it was done in the past, but it was done in the past in a certain way. Um, and, and I'm feeling that, you know, the first time Ben tried to uh, get the approval, that was, that was kind of put up there as, as needing some work. Um, 
So yeah, I, I think that's still a work in progress. I know uh, Dwayne had reached out uh, and is working on that policy, but I can guarantee you, you know, that kind of work takes some time and, and it's probably not done yet. Uh, subsequent, Sherry Lynn? So I guess that's the thing. Can, um, is Renee on? Can we do a follow-up on this and where it's at? Because you're right. We're going to be sitting here waiting a whole, more like a month or so. So what's been done? I would like to see at least what's been done and stuff. Because I, that's what was decided last time he was here. So I thought it was all taken care of. Great, thanks for that, Sherry Lynn. So just noting that, get an update, and, and I see Renee is on the line to get that update. Uh, next on my list, I had Michelle and then Helen. I was just gonna clarify, I'll second the motion to accept for information. Um, once we get the, in, the update from Ben, um, it was my understanding it was with three respects to a grant application he was submitting, which I'm assuming he submitted by now. Um, so I, I just wanted to clarify because I think Hazel was, I don't know what she, what she was seconding, but I had put my hand up to second my motion. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor, moved and seconded to accept this information. Um, I, I feel there's additional clarification after that, but I'm gonna deal with the motion first. Um, so all those in favor to accept this information? I have some comments. I have comments too. Yeah. Okay. Why are we voting? It wasn't finished. Okay. You didn't have your hands up. So. I did too. And you I acknowledged me. You already acknowledged that I had my hand up. Okay. I just want to okay. clarify something first. Okay, so we're gonna go um, Helen and then Hazel. You mentioned the business recognition. Ben's not asking for a business recognition. He's asking for a resolution to apply for funding. Business recognition yeah. is a separate process. It has nothing to do with this. He may wanna apply for a business recognition if he gets the funding to start his business, but he hasn't even started his business yet. He's asking for counsel. The funding, first in, the funding, wherever he's getting his funding, I can't remember the name. They're, erect, they're, they're telling him he needs a bank, owns a resolution to apply for the funding. And that's what he's doing. After he gets the funding, if he gets it, then he might come and apply for a business recognition. So the two are not, they have nothing to do with each other right now. And it's just confusing the situation by even saying that. And if we're saying Ben has to do follow-up, there should have been something here to tell us what that follow-up was supposed to be. Some kind of, we should have had a document to say, this is what Ben was supposed to bring back to us. I wasn't even aware they were going to be on the agenda, to be honest with you. I did see it this afternoon when I looked at the agenda. So I don't know when it got here, but I don't know. I... <laughs> I'm speechless. Thanks for that, Helen. I'm gonna go Hazel and then Audrey. With regard to what I said, when Helen's, after Helen finished what she said, it sounded to me like she was gonna make a, a motion that we would grant Ben that resolution of support. So that's what I was seconding. I agree, you can't keep putting him off. And as I recall, the last time Ben was here, I recall Nathan, I think you were chairing that time and you had agreed to work with him to provide the information, whatever you had to do for whatever he had to do further. So that's what I recall from that um, last time he was here. But anyway, I don't think it's gonna, it's not a real big, um, situation other than to just I guess give him a resolution of support so he can start applying for funding now because he has been waiting so that's my say so I'm just going to provide some clarity Ben did come the first time and he was present uh, virtually with council um, I was asked to do some follow-up mm -hmm. which I did with Ben and then I brought it back to council Ben wasn't here Ben didn't come that time 
Um, ben had asked me to, to go forward and, and uh, provide the, the clarity that was required. Uh, and again, at that time, that's when the business registry came up. And that's when Darren was asked to do some follow-up on the business registry. Now, I agree with Helen that uh, the business registry and, and this particular topic are, are separate. Um, but yeah. um, that's where it got left off was uh, when I brought it on behalf of Ben uh, about a month and a half ago, I believe that was. So the issue has been here twice. Uh, Ben's been here once. And um, in terms of the clarity provided, um, the, one of the items, Hazel, you will remember it because you, you requested it, was a presentation on vertical farms. And there's a few uh, other requests for that presentation on vertical farms. Uh, so that has been uh, completed uh, by Tuesday today in terms of providing that, yeah. that presentation. So as we stand right now, um, we still have uh, a Six Nations business who's not looking for recognition, who's looking uh, for support for the business idea and the concept of vertical farms. Uh, so I okay. understand that being the issue before us. All right, Mel. Okay, so I see some hands going up, probably for more clarification. So I'm gonna go to <laughs> Wendy, uh, Harry, and then Hazel. No. Yeah, I think Mel Audrey was before me. My apologies. Uh, Audrey, go ahead. So the order I had was Audrey, Wendy, Carrie, and then Hazel. I just basically wanted to say that the recollection, Nate, that you have is the same one that I have. Darren was supposed to go and do some follow-up on it from our last meeting. Thank you. And we haven't received it yet. Can you hear me, Nathan? Yep. Do you want to add it to the list? Okay, Wendy. I'm unmuted now. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, so, I mean, this gets more confusing as we talk about it, because my understanding when this originally came and Ben did the presentation, it wasn't just a mere letter of support, because I think we all talked about that, and everybody was in agreement on council that we all support food sovereignty. We all support, you know, businesses, entrepreneurship. 100% we support all of that. That's you know, that's not the issue. However, it was a very specific request that we needed, or Ben needed a letter for his application. It was very specific to the two pots of money that he was going after within the federal government. So it was more than just a letter of support. And at that time, I questioned that if we are going to do this, we have to make sure. So we're vested in this business because we're validating the business, everything that it stands for. And some counselors had questions about cannabis because that's Ben has been here the most about his cannabis business, which is the same name. So he's not doing cannabis, he's doing food sovereignty. So, and there was questions about, and I actually got community questions after that as well on, is he just going to grow cannabis? And I don't know that, I don't know the answer to that. So, you know, my question was back to, if we're going to do this to give a letter, because it's the application, it's the funding application. And we're saying this person, this business, we're validating that. And by doing that, what is the liability back on us? And if we do it for one, we do it for everyone in that regard, somebody going after funding. I have absolutely no issue with doing a, a, a broad letter of support for somebody who's going into the business of food sovereignty. I have no problem with that. But as soon as you go deeper in terms of what the request was, as I understood it, that's a different matter. And that was the follow-up that was requested from Darren. And Nathan, to your comments, I see Ben in the chat saying that he's, he's watching and there wasn't any effort mm -hmm. made to clarify anything with him. So that contradicts what you said in terms of that follow-up that you brought to council. So that's what makes us difficult. And that's why I said as information, because he's not here. Tuesday is here, you know, as he's as his mother and he's no, no. writing things. And so we're having this conversation. So it's very muddy. So that's the only reason I said as information. Just for clarity, um, 
I did follow up with Ben. I, I have emails to the effect, and that's how I got to the second phase of the motion that was brought forward um, the second time. So um, I did follow up with him. I have emails to that effect, and I'll resend those to council just for your records. Um, in terms of the speaking order, I'm going to go um, Carrie, Hazel, and then Melba. Um, okay, now. Uh, Tuesday, what exactly is is been asking for in your presentation? What we're asking for, and I'm as, I'm joining Benjamin as an angel investor and a supporter of food sovereignty. Yes, I'm his mother, Wendy, but I've, I'm I'm really kind of I don't know off off set that that level of support and investment that I'm making into this initiative is being, you know, kind of laughed at. And, you know, it, it's, it's hard to, um, it's hard to take. But what we are asking for is- I never laughed at anything Tuesday and I would not do that. If you want to reference that as, as a letter or as a BCR, the original request was for a BCR so that he could apply for grant money to help build this vegetable grow, vertical grow business. That's what the request is. That is what the request remains. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, Nathan, before we vote on that, I'm, I'm prepared to make an uh, amendment. Um, okay. What's your amendment? Then we'll move over to the movers and seconders. Well, the amendment is to um, support, to give the letter of support to Ben so he can apply for whatever funding is needed. Thank you. Mover, seconder. That's not an amendment, that's a new motion. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to follow a process, what we have. I'm not comfortable with talking to an investor when the business owner is not here. I'm not comfortable with that, and I don't think it's good process. So I'll, I'll leave my motion. If it gets defeated, somebody else can make another motion. Okay. I also okay. want to make an amendment. It's Melba. Okay, when I have Hazel and then Melba. Oh, Hazel was first. No, Nathan, I think um, I didn't I didn't put my say so in that I wanted to speak. It was Melba who spoke. It wasn't me. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry about that, Melba. Yeah, concerning the motion by uh, Wendy and Michelle, it's his motion for to accept for information. And I think that information really comes back to an invitation to Benjamin McDonald to follow up for a decision of Six Nations Council by providing any further information concerning funding and a support letter. And that's directly connected to further information. I don't want uh, a community member to be shut off. He has been here, as was mentioned several times. So I think we should, uh, Honor that and be very respectful. Thank you for I that. No. So I'm, I'm understanding that um, there is, I'm just working through this. Um, so there's a motion on the floor moved by Wendy, seconded by Michelle. Um, the amendment is that we accept this information, but ask Ben to come back for that final um, piece. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what you're hearing. Okay, I'm um, going to the mover and seconder to see if that's acceptable. Did Melba say she moved that? No, nope, she she wanted to make the amendment. So so I will feel I'm I'm going to leave my motion as information, and then and Elba wants to make a subsequent motion to say that I think that's fair. I, absolutely, cool. and I'll support that. But I'd like to have the two separate motions because I'm. I'm trying to follow process as I understand it. That's all. Okay. 
Okay, so what we're hearing, oh, sharing them. So, so this is gonna be the first motion, then um, the, another one can go on. We can put another motion on the floor after. All right, because, all right. Okay, so, okay. So seeing no more comments, thanks council and thanks for your patience uh, as I work through that one. Um, but uh, there is a motion on the floor to accept this presentation as information. Um, moved by Wendy, seconded by Michelle. Um, going to the vote, all in favor? Uh, Nathan, before, okay. before, before we vote on it, is there, so Melbourne's motion is gonna be kind of connected to what uh, Wendy's motion is? Nope, they're two separate motions. Uh, two separate right. motions. I'm just voting. We're just working through the first one. Oh, okay. So it, so once when this motion goes through it, it's pretty well finished. Or is Ben going to request time on nope. the agenda again some other time? No, Gary. Um, so we're going to deal with the motion to accept this information, which is part of the process. And then um, I understand next that Melba is coming forward with a separate motion. Wendy, your understanding? Yes, that's my understanding. So for clarity, Carrie, I'm making this motion to accept Tuesday's presentation as information because she's not the business owner. So that's why I'm putting that on the floor. I don't know that we can do anything else with it. But then Melba said she wants to, or her amendment, or make a motion that Ben be invited back to address this with council. And there's nothing stopping that motion. <clears throat> As I understand. Okay. okay. Okay, so we were in the middle of the vote. So I'm gonna go back to the vote. All in favor? Are there any opposed? One opposed, noting Helen Miller. I'm okay, opposed. that motion. And Hazel, so two opposed. And I'm opposed, Melba. Three opposed. So what I'm really confused now. I, I thought Melba was gonna make a motion that would kind of cover the situation so Ben would it eventually get his letter of support at some point. So Gary, this motion is still gonna pass uh, to accept this information. And then we'll move to the next motion. Okay, I'm so, opposed to it then. Okay, hold on here. Okay, so we're at a tie, four to four, to accept this information. Um, as the chair, I'll cast the uh, vote in the affirmative to accept this as information. So the motion does pass. But I do note for the record that I did have to break that tie and I'm voting in the affirmative. Okay, I understand, Melba, you wanted to put forward an, uh, an additional subsequent motion? Yes, the motion is to invite Benjamin McDonald to follow up for a decision of Six Nations Council by providing any further information concerning funding and a support letter. Is Tuesday, is that what you're asking for? No, that doesn't really make sense. I'm sorry, Melba, but I'm, I'm not understanding the motion. We're looking for a letter of support. If you want Benjamin here to sit on the screen to say, yes, I would like the letter of support. We show, we've given you the information. We understand that the understanding around business recognition policy is a separate issue 
from what we're asking for uh, for a BCR or a letter of support so that he can go forward with uh, funding grant requests. So well, it, it's been it's been pointed out tonight by uh, Wendy that you have made the presentation tonight, and it's been accepted as information from you, and that's why I've made this in this uh, resolution. So if you don't want the resolution, then I'll withdraw. I am asking for him to come back to answer any further information or give further information concerning funding and a support letter. This is what I understood that he wanted. Well, I understood that he made all of those and that what was holding up the, the support was Darren's work to do business recognition policy. And what Nathan clarified earlier is that it got confused that those are two distinct issues. So we're confused around what further, you, you're, okay. you, Melba, you're saying further information. We're confused on what the further information would be. Further information is, do they understand this virtual farming? Do they have any other questions that may arise from between now and when Benjamin may come to council again to get the final decision? Helen, go ahead. Um, with all due respect to Melba, your resolution doesn't make sense. I mean, it's almost the same as the resolution that passed. But why even make another one? The way you're making it. What you're doing is inviting him. It, it, it didn't uh, make any decision to accept his information. That's well, not a decision. Your, your resolution isn't going to make no decisions letter. either. Your resolution isn't going to make any decisions. Oh, All you're asking is for Ben to come back. Now. Well, if he wants to come back, yes. he'll come back. We don't need a resolution for that. Thanks for that, Helen. I'm going to go to Wendy, and then I, I have a suggestion. Okay. It's it's getting confusing. So if Tuesday doesn't accept it, Helen doesn't accept it, and I'm, I'm assuming other people don't, so I'll withdraw. Well, I have a question on that, Nathan, if I can. Okay, I got a speaking order, so I'm going to go to Wendy, Audrey, and then Tuesday, and see so, where this takes. So, I guess I, you know, there's some frustration with this because I, I agree with what Helen said earlier. When I looked at the agenda, when we got the agenda, this wasn't on there. So I don't know when it got put on. I don't know who put it on, but if it was going to be on the agenda then we should have had all the information to go with it. Then that would, we would have that, we could review it and we wouldn't be in this situation now of trying to backtrack and figure it all out and where we're at. And, and I feel strongly that Ben should be here. He should be doing the presentation. And no disrespect to Tuesday, but Ben should be here, right? Um, moving forward. But the problem is, is I, I'm not sure how this, transpired, but we need all that back background information. So I can help with that. And, and I just went through the process. I always do if a community member asks to go on the agenda, I forward it to the agenda review team. Um, I believe Tuesday called me on Tuesday, <laughs> last Tuesday, um, and <laughs> indicated she was looking to get on the agenda. So um, I thought I was following process with um, forwarding it on to the agenda review team um, for that follow-up. I believe Audrey, you had a, were you next? Yeah, I, I, I think so, unless somebody else is, is there. I think this is just going around and around and around and um, I think we need to bring some closure to it. We've accepted it as information. I think the thing to do now is to get the information from Darren that the council requested from him. 
and then council can make a decision and then have Ben back in and discuss that decision with him. But it has to be with, with Ben and Tuesday, if you want to be on the same call with him and then at that time, I, that, that's your right. So if we could focus our information to get in the information we need and to, to make an informed decision. I don't know if you need it as a motion or just a path forward. Thank you. If you want it as a motion, I'll make it as a motion. Okay, um, Helen. Well, Nathan made a motion in the last meeting we had. Got turned out. I don't know what information we're, we're supposed to be needing. We've already identified the information Darren's working on isn't relevant to this situation. So I'm, I'm, I think council needs to be clear on what information do we want from Ben when he comes back so that he can bring it and present it to us. What do we want? Thanks for that, Helen. Um, it's Melba. It's Melba. I'm. I'm going to. Okay, go ahead, Melba, and then I'm going to try and wrap this I guess, up. I guess one of the things we want to know is uh, where. Do, where is the support letter? Where does it go? That's one of the things. And he's able to provide that. He's got all the answers. But we okay, don't. What I'm going to suggest is we close off this discussion um, because we are talking in circles. Um, what I'm going to suggest is uh, we invite Ben back uh, at their next general council meeting while it's fresh in our minds. Uh, we go back and, and ask um, Shirley to dig up all of the information that has been um, presented as it relates to this topic, including the, the BCR that I put together last time. And uh, we revisit this at the next general council meeting and invite Ben back. Go ahead, Audrey. Will Darren be available for that time because he's a key player in this? Okay. Um, he's back on the 10th, doesn't he? As surely, I guess. Nathan, yes, the, Darren will be back on the 10th of May. So we won't put it back on the agenda until all the information is gathered. And um, from both parties, council, and um, we'll make sure that Ben is invited to, to one of the meetings. So we'll work it through it administratively to make sure that it comes back and that you have all the information you are looking for, hopefully. Okay. Thanks for that. So that's, um, I'm getting some thumbs up from folks. So that's a direction we'll take. And um, Tuesday, you had one more comment? Yeah, I did. I had a couple of conference um, and I want to thank Melba for asking the same question that I did. I had a couple of questions and you seem to have clarified it because I wasn't sure that we needed a motion to be come back. So, and you've clarified now that it's just going to be um, an invitation background information, you're going to identify what additional information that has not been provided to date that you're looking for so that we can wrap this up. Um, I really want to emphasize that we're in the growing season now. Um, it's been, I don't, what, three? I don't even know how many months that this has been going to council. It's been a month since the request council has made to get your Oh, what did you call it? Your business recognition policy? And is that business recognition policy going to continue to hold up the request for a letter of support to go for funding? Um, a, a month has passed even since that has been made. And it's like, like you, you're supporting food security, you're supporting entrepreneurship, but you're timelines and your processes are not reflecting that support. So we come back at the next council meeting after May 10th, 
will like will the policy be written so you feel comfortable mm -hmm. enough to make that decision? Um, will we have the questions that you have in advance so that when we do come back that we can answer whatever is outstanding? But farmers are growing now, guys, like the seeds are going in now. So he's going to miss the grow season if we can, like we're, we're there, guys, we're there. Okay, so thanks for that Tuesday. And, and what I'll do is um, I'll work, I see Shirley's got her hands up. I'll work with Shirley. Um, don't know how I keep getting involved in this, but I'll work with Shirley in terms of getting the information together, um, pulling that up uh, and, um, you know, just checking the notes to make sure that we've uh, answered all of the questions. And uh, as soon as Darren comes back, uh, that invitation coming back, and, and we'll do this as expediently as possible going forward. Okay, I'm getting thumbs up. Um, and Shirley, do you need clarification on anything? Seeing no. Okay, so we will move on to the next agenda item. Thank you, Tuesday, for the presentation and thanks, Council, for your patience. Um, and also, sorry, Council, I forgot to adopt the agenda before we went into that topic. So I'll do so now. Um, looking for a mover and seconder for the agenda. Um, Moved by Audrey, seconded by um, a whole bunch of people. Michelle, um, any additions, subjections to the agenda? Wendy? I have one addition and I, I sent the, some information to council so that you had it in advance. Questions about the um, Hydro One and Public Works proposed business. Um, that's one piece. And asking if we can move item 2B, one to three from the in-camera agenda to open for transparency and accountability to community. So we got one agenda item and sorry, I'm just pulling up my in-camera agenda. So that was two A recommendations to be to all the way through to three? Yeah, I think it's two B, one, two, and three. Okay, I see them. And I see that Lonnie and Matt are on the line, so we're on in the meeting. Okay, does council have a problem? I guess we'll vote on it with the, uh, we move to the agenda. So that's one addition and one move. <clears throat> Any other uh, amendments, additions to the agenda? Hearing and seeing none, moving to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing none, the agenda has been adopted. Okay, moving on to general council minutes of April 13th. Wonder if council has a chance to review and if there's a mover to move on the minutes. I'll move. Sherry move, Lynn. By, move by Sherry Lynn, seconder, second by Wendy. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing and hearing none, motion has passed. Okay, moving forward, uh, note item number six. And I do note, uh, Michelle, you did uh, indicate you are in conflict. Yep. So do I exit out of this and join back in? Sure, so what I just you... wanted to correct, it's, um, there's the Kuga translation and it is we learn from the earth. So um, I'll just share that for whoever's doing the minutes later on. Oh. Thank you for that, Michelle. So uh, just for this agenda item, Shirley, if you can just remove Michelle just for this agenda item and bring her back in once we're done. Okay, 
Hey, Council. Um, so this is a recommendation coming from Ethics Committee um, that the Six Nations Excellent uh, Ethics Research Committee recommends to the Six Nations Elected Council to approve Michelle Bumbery's application to conduct research titled We Learn from the Earth. Discussion, um, questions on this particular piece? Go over to Wendy. I'll move it. Moved by Wendy. Seconder, Sherry Lynn. Okay, been properly moved and seconded. Moved by uh, Councillor Johnson, seconded by Councillor Hill Pierce. Any further questions, clarifications? Hi, right, it's Melba. Go ahead, Melba. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to comment that uh, uh, this is great seeing a counselor. I believe this is the first time that I have seen a political person belonging to the Six Nations Council and uh, a candidate for a PhD. So I think uh, our people are really moving forward in uh, their educational requirements uh, concerning a lot of the business that we have to deal with now. And as you can see, we got uh, yourself, Nathan, of course, and three other ones that are fairly young and are really contributing to our business that we have on a weekly and daily basis. So I really want to commend and congratulate uh, someone like uh, Michelle in bringing up a family, working in the community at many levels, and also being a political person and going for her PhD. So I'd like to, I'm sure we all share that proudness when we have our own people to um, extend themselves to the level of our non-native people and beyond. Thank you. Thanks for that, uh, Melba. I couldn't put it better myself and certainly echo your, your sentiments going forward. Um, so thank you for that. Um, seeing no more comments or hands being raised, going to move to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing and hearing none. Motion has passed. Uh, motion to waive second reading. Moved by uh, Councillor Johnson, seconded by Councillor Hill Pierce. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing and hearing none. Motion to waive second reading has passed. Uh, moving forward on to agenda item number seven, uh, recommendation from corporate and emergency. This was deferred. Welcome back, Michelle. Uh, we're moving on to number seven, recommendations from corporate and emergency. Um, this was deferred, um, that corporate and emergency deferred to the Six Nations Council. What we're looking for is a political rep to sit on the Justice Committee, I understand, at Chiefs of Ontario. And I see Barb Journals with us. Uh, Barb, could you provide a little bit of context uh, to this particular uh, discussion? I didn't. Hi, I didn't even know that was up for discussion. <laughs> I just thought I was here for the briefing note that I sent in regards to um, a high risk case. So, what are you looking for in regards to the um, Chiefs of Ontario rep position? Oh, um, okay. <laughs> it's um, Justice Department, Chiefs of Ontario. They're looking for a rep for their Justice Committee. Um, okay. And I think that I think the director. So I'm stepping down from that position as of May first, and Tim Bucci will be stepping up. And I think it would be good for him to be sitting on that committee because we're looking at networking and um, looking at other funding opportunities that is presented at at the um, Q table. Um, it just helps him to stay informed and to help them be informed of what we're doing as well. So it's just really basically networking and just seeing what listening and observing. Thanks for that. And I do know what I'm going to, and I, it sparked my memory. There is no briefing note to this actually. And, exactly, um, there's not. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a series of brief, um, back and forth by email. So we might have to defer this again because I don't think we have the info. Um, but I see some questions, so I'm going to go to Councillor Wendell and Johnson. 
Yeah, thanks, Nathan. So the reason that this was brought forward is it is correspondence back and forth and it was on corporate and emergency services, but because it was requesting a council representative that that's a full, that's full council decision, right? Not a committee decision. So we thought it best dealt with here. And in right. reading the original correspondence, it's a chiefs and technical table. So whoever is going to be there as technicians, but they were asking for the elected chief to sit and if he's not available, then a proxy. So that's where that representation came from. So, um, and I thought Barb was copied in there, but maybe she's not. So um, that's how I interpret the correspondence we received. Thanks for that, Wendy. That's perfect. And, and I think that narrows it in, in terms of what we're looking for. So there is um, that room for that political rep at the Chiefs of Ontario, Ch Chiefs Committee on Justice. Um, is there any interest from any of the councillors to sit uh, as that political rep? Is it going to involve any? Is it going to involve getting any kind of money? No. <laughs> well, Barb said something about funding. <laughs> Didn't you, Barb? Well, it's listening. No, it's a list. Well, it's listening to see what's coming down the pipeline, right? To see what they're doing in regards to funding opportunities, specifically for justice. List. Yeah. I have a list, so I go Sherry Lynn, and then Wendy. Wendy. I was just raising my hand if, it, if no one else wants to, I'll do okay. it. Okay, so volunteer coming from Councillor Hill Pierce, uh, Wendy. Yeah, just to provide clarification again, reading from the notes that we have, um, the collaborative technical table on the enforcement of First Nations laws. So that's pretty big, right? If that's what they're getting into and studying the issues around it's why are they not being prosecu prosecuted? So this is a huge committee and what it's looking to do and what it's looking to take on. And it's Canada and Ontario both sitting at the table. So just for clarity on what this is. Thanks for that, uh, Wendy. So we do have a volunteer come forward and uh, uh, Councillor Sherilyn Hill Pierce. Any other discussion? So my understanding is going forward, we'll have both a technical and political rep. Uh, and I think uh, Wendy's right. There's this is um, this is a massive issue going forward. And if they have the attention of both federal and provincial, we should take advantage. So, is there uh, agreement for Sherry Lynn to move forward uh, as the rep? Helen, Helen, you're on mute. Thought I heard Barb say she was stepping down. Did, did I hear that? Yes. So we don't have a no rep there. She's stepping down. Well, we have Tim. Tim Bucci is stepping up into the director position. Oh. Yeah. OK. OK, Council, so I think we've had discussion. Um, is there agreement to move forward with Sherry Lynn? And if so, I'll need a move. I'll move, move it to Melba. OK, move by Melba, seconded by Wendy. Uh, to move forward with um, Councillor Sherry Lynn here, Pierce is the political, and, and just so I'm correct, it's the political alternate to Chief Mark Hill, right? When he's not available, and then I'm hearing Kate okay, nodding heads. Okay, um, so all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing and hearing none, motion has passed. I'm assuming we need second reading on that wave. So motion to waive second reading, moved by Wendy, seconder. Second, Melba. Second by Melba, all in favor to waive second reading. Any opposed? Seeing and hearing none, motion has passed. Okay, council, um, as we look to scheduling, um, there's nothing we have to schedule. Schedule is in your kit, so I usually read out. Uh, we're looking into May. May 3rd, there's a finance meeting at nine o'clock. Uh, May 5th, um, we have 
um, the Health Human Services Committee, uh, strategic planning hold on the 10th, and our next general council meetings on the 11th. Um, so that takes us up to the next general council. Um, uh, going now to Nate? the additional items. Yes, Carrie. Uh, the general council on 11th, is that at nine or is that that normal six, six o'clock? I think it's just a typo on there. It's six o'clock. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Good catch. I'm going to go to the additional items. Uh, first one, first edition was questions about Hydro One and the partnerships with Public Works. Uh, and yes, the information is in your emails. I'll turn it over to Councillor Johnson. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, I just wanted to bring this to the council's attention and see if we can get some follow up on it. A uh, business owner did um, approach me, Mudcat Milling and Forestry Services. They're a fully insured local forestry company registered through Six Nations uh, Council. They're owned and operated by Six Nations members with over 10 years forestry experience and over 40 years in construction trades. And they were questioning the article in Turtle Island News about the upcoming work with Hydro One and Public Works. And I think that's in uh, relation to Public Works coming and getting into um, clearing services and tree trimming and, and whatnot and, and, and bidding on a project with Hydro One. And the issues that, that has come up and is, is being questioned is that Public Works is competing in bids with our local businesses. And it's the question being raised is, is there an unfair advantage because public works is under council and government funded. And so it creates that unfair advantage against business owners that are doing the exact same thing. So I'm posing that to council because when, we, when public works came to us, there was no information that would, came with it with, you know, is it competing? What's happening with that? So, you know, those questions weren't raised and, and included. Thanks for that, Wendy. I see some hands going up. Um, hey. And then Carrie. Yeah, I think this needs to be taken back with the Director of Public Works and uh, have a discussion with him. It's, um, and ask him those questions because it's not fair to talk about this without him here because he's one of the key players. So that's my recommendation to Meet with the director, please. Thanks for that, Audrey. I'll go over to Kerry. Yeah, I was I was going to say the same thing that uh, Audrey said. Talk to Mike. Okay, thanks, Kerry. I'll go back over to Wendy. Yeah, and, and I'm fine with that. It's just that as full council, we we did approve that venture through public works and it came from committee to full council. So that's why I'm bringing it back to this table as, as full council. And you'll see in the correspondence that I sent to all of you that the business did reach out to Mike. That's the first thing that they did. So they did follow process. It's a very professional piece of correspondence. And it was clarified from public works that there will, there will be no subcontracting out subcontracting, subcontracting out of any work whatsoever so that it is it does read like it is a direct competition. So I think it's something that we need to be aware of, of council, and is this what we want to do? Thanks for that, Wendy. And, and I just add to that, I, I don't recall there being a guiding policy to guide um, departments as it relates to these types of circumstances too. So that's another issue. I, I think we have to go back and, and get some work on done as well. Okay, so Councillor Johnson, you're good with the follow-up. We'll, we'll work through um, and uh, um, continue to kind of go through the pieces uh, with Public Works in the interest that you know, we're not looking for competition, but uh, actually looking for fairness and equality across the board with businesses. And this will be brought back um, at the next available council meeting after the work's done. Wendy? Yeah, I, I'm fine with that. I would ask that the, the chair of BNI perhaps reach out to the business owner as well. So if there's further discussion needed at your committee, that that can be included as well. Thanks for that. 
Okay. Um, in terms of that particular piece, uh, we got that follow up. Shirley's marking it, and and that'll go into next steps going forward, uh, as well as um, you know the work at the administrative level, as well as the work at the committee level and in the BNI chair. Noted. Okay, council. Moving forward, uh, we did move um, item two. 2B, uh, 1 to 3. So I do see Lonnie is with us again, and this was a deferral from um, the last council meeting uh, to uh, get some clarity around uh, our legal pieces and um, this particular agreement. Lonnie, you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh... Yeah, the, yesterday when I was at uh, at the political liaison, I was put over to invite Ben Jetton or somebody from his office to uh, to speak to the mutual confidentiality agreement and the capacity funding agreement. Uh, and uh, I did uh, contact Ben about that, and I did uh, uh, email him the uh, documents. I didn't hear back from him. I assumed that. Uh, it, uh, Councillor was going to be sending him an invitation or for him to participate in tonight's meeting because I think that was a purpose of, uh, of why the matter wasn't dealt with uh, yesterday that uh, so he could uh, uh, give an opinion on the suitability of, uh, of entering into these agreements uh, with respect to the uh, Lake Erie connector project so uh, uh, I don't know. Has has he been has he been invited? Uh, did he respond at all, or 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 not? Uh, my apologies. I don't have knowledge of that. I'm wondering, Tammy. Um... Um, I did not send any invitation. I sorry, Lonnie. I should have checked with you. I assume that you would be following up with him and express with him what council's wishes were. Uh, so no, I didn't extend an invitation. Okay, uh, because I had seen some email correspondence that somebody was going to be sending him an invitation, and I thought, okay, so that'll be taken care of. Uh, and I didn't, uh, of course, uh, I can't invite him myself, uh, uh, so uh, uh, I had thought it had to come through council. Okay, so I'm assuming no follow up was done. What I'm going to do is um, suggest that we defer this again until such time that and, and I think for the most part, we're just looking for even uh, a memo from Ben uh, with his opinion on on the pros and cons of the, um, the collaboration agreement that's being considered here. I, I, yeah, and I think he did indicate he could, he could do some follow up on it, but I just don't think he had the time to uh, because it was just you know just one day's uh, uh, difference there that he could get something ready for us for tonight, but maybe you know if it went to another uh, council meeting in the first part of the month, and maybe maybe we couldn't have that answer by then. Okay, thanks for that, Lonnie. Uh, I see some questions, so I'm going to go over to Councillor Johnson. Yeah, thanks. And it's you know I, I think it's important to do the due diligence on this and and what the impact is of of doing. Um, going forward with it, you know, we're talking about $250,000 and, you know, how did we arrive at that figure? Is that what the company dictated to us? Um, what are the calculations? What is that based on? Um, should we be looking at more money than that? Like, wh what are all of those things? Because I didn't see that in any of the, any of the background information. And my question in terms of um, the legal response was, you know, this is coming forward from the company that wants us to do business and, and giving us this money in this agreement. So what's the risk with that? And is there any conflict with doing that moving forward? I mean, I read in the background that it was done before quite a number of years back, but um, so, so I'm looking for that information from, from lawyers. I think it's important for us to consider that as well. <clears throat> Okay, thanks for that, Wendy, and I, I totally agree. Um, 
similar questions I had in terms of those pieces that I hope that we could answer. So what I'm going to suggest is we look to the beginning of the month, maybe um, get some of that due diligence done, give Ben, uh, our lawyer Ben Jetton, the time to uh, get us uh, some paperwork back and some literature around that. Uh, and, and maybe even if uh, we can get them on, on the call at our next available um, time. Was that sufficient for council? Getting nodding heads and thumbs up. Okay, so um, there's a direction on that particular piece. So that brings us to the conclusion of the uh, open session of the agenda. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, moved I'll by Sherilyn, seconded by Helen uh, to adjourn. Um, like to thank the community for their time. Uh, and uh, we look forward to our next uh, available time that we can be in front of the community. So thank you everyone and have a great evening. Stay healthy and stay safe.